Hey, it's M Gamers here, and I actually am doing a review today on the game Galaxy on Fire 2 for Android. It is specifically made for Tegra. I am not sure if it runs on other things, but I'm an Atrix 4G here, and I'm going to attempt to show you some gameplay of it. Now, I know that I, there's not really any cameras that can focus on the screen. They probably can't read it very well, but... Uh, I'm going to try and show you how the game works. Now you have to actually play the game to see it. The graphics on this game are amazing. Now where? It's GOF2 THD. I don't know what the THD stands for. Some of the other games are. I have the sound playing on my laptop. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear that. But this game is free for part of it on the NVIDIA Tegra Zone, which is it's like NVIDIA's little game center. You get a whole galaxy, and I just uh, played through that galaxy, and... So after that, I had to marry her. The surgery looked great, but eventually I realized... Uh, turn the volume oh, down right. a little bit. It's fully voiced once you download... It's like 3 megabytes to download, and then it's like 530 after that. I hope it saves to external SD, otherwise I have like no application space. I haven't looked it up yet, but um, the thing is fully voiced, it's, I mean, it's the voices you would expect from a $15 game. Not to say they're bad, but uh, they can be annoying at times. And the timing is kind of weird. The little bar that's going across right here tells you how much their, uh, how much time is left on the audio clip, but right is like the second it ends is the second they stop talking, like the end of the word which is kind of annoying because it makes the um, text not seem fluent because the guy will start talking instantaneously after the guy finishes his sentence instead of like comprehending. So I'm going to skip all this crap. And I've already completed it so if I go to depart it's going to ask me to uh, play through here. Now it loads the little uh, ding and I already have on my... Yeah I have it up. So what it's hard for you guys to see this. I'm going to try and get it to focus, but it's not. Anyways, so it gives you the little in-app payment screen. You don't actually buy it on the market, which kind of sucks because uh, I don't know if the license is transferable. But uh, I'm going to buy it. Bye! And we're going to see how this goes, and then I'll show you a little bit of the gameplay. Authorizing purchase. Oh hi. There's the. There's the uh, sorry about that. Might edit that out. Full version unlocked. Thank you. And well, now we're gonna leave. I'm gonna depart the station. Now this game can use. Uh, let's turn some audio back on here. This video does not do the game. Or the. Um. Uh, it's hard to play this game and talk at the same time. The video doesn't do the graphics justice. Um, the game is pretty hard because it's really easy to die. Like, my shields don't seem to have recharged at all. Either that or I just didn't put any shields on. And I'm stuck with this terrible ship called Betty and I don't know how to unlock the new ones because they're like super expensive. But the basic controls are... Hopefully I won't get shot down before that. You move with a little stick over here. You shoot with this button. You can pan around. As you can see, there's a ship behind me, so I should probably get moving. When you hit this little button, you can change your view, and you can fly around like this. I've not seen that button. Oh, you can choose your secondary weapons. Which I guess is what this is. And this right here is your missile. And then when you click on this, it tells you where you want to go, and it will automatically guide you there. Since you can't read the text, it says, Aloft Station in the Asteroid Field. Now, the main premise of the game is that you are in a spaceship and you just killed some pirates and you're going to collect bounty and they damaged your hyperdrive and it warps you 35 or 34 years into the future across the galaxy and the guy is nice enough to take your ship and not give it back to you or attempt to even fix it or even salvage the parts so he gives you this terrible mining ship and um, it gets crappier from there Overall, the game is actually quite fun. The graphics are amazing. 
you actually have to download it on a Tegra device. I doubt it will work on any other devices. Maybe with that chain fire thing, it may work. You might see these little dots scrolling around right here. Though that's like your radar system. It's actually quite effective. I wish more games would use a radar system like this. If you have like a 3D open environment like this, and you can fly everywhere, and you mine, and when you mine uh, these asteroids flying around in the background, you actually gain money after you sell it back to the space stations, which is pretty much like the little home world. It's kind of like a RPG game, but it's also an arcade game because you actually do this. It's kind of like if um, I'm not going to say it's as good as Knights of the Old Republic, but it's like Knights of, if Knights of the Old Republic met Star Fox. Um, the controls take some getting used to. I really don't like touchscreen controls on anything. And I just locked onto a good guy. That's not cool. Okay, let's try and lock onto this guy right here. There is a little, like, meter. As you can see, someone just got destroyed. It is, um, really hard to control this. There's also... How do we do this? Go we'll pause, go we'll options, controls. You can also do the accelerometer. And then now we calibrated it. And then we can control it like that. And um, it's really hard to do this holding it still. So I'm not going to leave it on this mode. But if we go to options, control, change back to touch. One cool thing is called the action freeze, which kind of reminds me of that Halo camera. But you can pan around, and it really shows you the good graphics. Like, this video unfortunately does not show anything, and I really hate how it's blurry. I just don't have any good camera. Well, actually, my HX has a really good camera, but uh, obviously I don't have two of them. So that doesn't work too well. So we can zoom out, and it shows you that, and I can show you a nice big asteroid. The quality of these is amazing. This is like, this is almost better than the Wii. I'm not going to say it's like Xbox 360, because most people are going to obviously tell you no, but this is like console quality graphics. The game is $15 to totally own, which might seem really high, but you get 20 galaxies. On the trial, you get one, and it took me like an hour and a half to get through the first one, so... I'm a fan of having good games on Android. Angry Birds to me is like a little tiny arcade game, and I hate it. I mean, it's fun, but I can't stand playing it because I got I used to own a DS, so I'm used to having games that are like hours long, like Avalon Code. I think it's Avalon Code. Although that game is a little bit weird, it's long and it's got pretty decent graphics for having four megabytes of RAM in the system. And I'm going to, if I take one more hit, I'm dead. As you can see, it is not that easy to aim. The AI has seems to have, like, incredible aim, which makes it pretty hard. Game over. Um, overall, so far after playing, I give this game about an 8.5 out of 10, because my device is also really warm right now. Because it has really good graphics which I know doesn't count for all gameplay these days but it has a storyline which like every game seems to lack these days the I'm a sucker for Star Fox style games like space shooters and stuff like this, I'm a real sucker for them because I love Star Fox a um, couple of cons though it only runs on Tegra devices which isn't really that much of a con because it looks great on my Tegra device sorry for you guys that don't own Tegra devices it the audio is a little bit weird sounding. I don't like it. And if you may or may not have noticed, the brightness settings are automatically turned up to maximum, which makes when that little pop-up menu came up to let me buy it, it really blinded me. As you can see, it dims down. And then I go back in. And we might see it brighten up. Yeah, it's really bright, which makes the color stand out, but the Atrix screen itself kind of sucks. So, that's how you have this game, blah, blah, blah. Um, can't really think of anything else to say on it. Uh, 
there's a lot of audio. I like how big the game is. I'm tired of having like two megabyte games that they expect you to pay like five bucks for. And I hope it doesn't get ported to iOS because this is one great example of a good Android game. So, all in all, I would recommend buying this game if you like big quality games. Now, if you're like more of an arcade style gamer, like Angry Birds, and you're like, Angry Birds is your life, I probably don't think this game would be for you. Because it is kind of expensive at $15. But compared to a $60 game, that's not that bad. It seems to be really well done. I don't know if it's ever going to get any updates. I hope it does get a couple of updates. Because there is a couple of bugs that I have noticed. Like it crashed once on me entirely. The title screen already like wowed me when I first saw it. It is available for free on the Android market for Tegra devices. In app purchase unlocks the entire version. It's called Galaxy on Fire 2. And this has been an M Gamers Productions review. I've attached some images at the end that were taken in-game by the in-game picture taker. Um, you're going to want to view this on around 360p, otherwise it's going to look a little bit pixelated because I just stretched it to take up the full screen, so if you're on a small device it's a lot easier to see. But with that, that'll be the end of my review. Enjoy the pictures. There's only a couple of them because a lot of them look the same and I don't want to have to take a while to have to go fly around and find everything. So, if you enjoy this game, make sure you buy it. Thank you.